questions? Okay, let's finish up the plan and then move on to feeding time. While the soldiers were loading the dreams, the BFG and Sophie disappeared over the mountains on a mysterious errand. When they came back, the BFG had a sack the size of a small house slung over his shoulder. What's that you've got in there? The head of the army demanded to know. Curiosity is killing the rat, the BFG said, and he turned away from the silly man. When he was sure that all his precious dreams had been safely loaded onto the jeeps, the BFG said, now, he is driving back to the belly poppers and picking up the frightsome giants. The jeeps drove back to the helicopters. The 50,000 dreams were car carried carefully, jar by jar, onto the helicopter. The soldiers climbed back on board, but the BFG and Sophie stayed on the ground. Then they all returned to where the nine giants were lying. It was a fine sight to be, I'm sorry, it was a fine sight to see them. These great air machines hovering over the trussed up giants. It was an even finer sight to see the giants being woken up by the terrific thundering of the engines overhead. And the finest sight of all was to observe those nine hideous brutes squirming and twisting about on the ground like a mass of mighty snakes as they tried to free themselves from their ropes and chains. I is flesh bungled, roared the flesh lump eater. I is splits wiggled, yelled the child chewer. I is swag swalloped, bellowed the bun cr bone cruncher. I is goose groggled, howled the man hugger. I is gunzel swiped, shouted the meat lover. I is flock gungled, <laughs> screamed the maid masher. I is slop groggled, squawked the gizzard. Squawked the gizzard. I is crod squinked, yelled the blood bottler. I is bop muggered, screeched the butcher boy. I think I'm going to type up this page um, and you can kind of test yourself and your your ability to read nonsense words with all the words on this page. So you can you can give it a try and then you can go back and replay it and follow along as I read it if you'd like. A little something fun. The nine giant carrying helicopters each chose a separate giant and hovered directly over him. Very strong steel hawsers with hawks on the end of them were lowered from the front and rear of each helicopter. The BFG quickly secured the hooks of the giant's chains, one hook near the legs and the other near the arms. Then very slowly, the giants were winched up into the air, parallel with the ground. Ooh, parallel. We just did that in math. The giants roared and bellowed, but there was nothing they could do. The BFG, with Sophie once more resting comfortably in his ear, set off at a gallop for England. The helicopters all banked around and followed after him. It was an amazing spectacle. Those nine helicopters winged through the sky, each with a trussed up 50 foot long giant slung underneath. The giants themselves must have found it an interesting experience. They never stopped bellowing, which is like moaning, yelling, but their howls were drowned by the noise of the engines. When it began to get dark, the helicopter switched on power for searchlights and trained them on the galloping giant so as to keep him in sight. They flew right through the night and arrived in England just as dawn was breaking. All right, next chapter is a short one. It's called Feeding Time. While the giants were being captured, a tremendous bustle and hustle was going on back home in England. Every earth digger and mechanical contrabands in the country had been mobilized to dig the colossal hole in which the nine giants were to be permanently imprisoned. 10,000 men and 10,000 machines worked ceaselessly, that means without stop, through the night under powerful arc lights, and the massive tank was completed only just in time. The hole itself was about twice the size of a football field and 500 feet deep. The walls were perpendicular, and engineers had calculated that there was no way a giant could escape once he was put in. Even if all nine giants were to stand on each other's shoulders, the topmost giant would still be some 50 feet from the top of the hole. So they're going to bury them all in this hole. That's their prison. The nine giant carrying helicopters hovered over the massive pit. You know what, friends? Buried is the wrong word. They're not going to bury them. They're digging this hole and they're going to stick them all in. And they're going to be too low to be able to get out, even if one stands on top of the other. The nine giant carrying helicopters hovered over the massive pit. The giants, one by one, were lowered to the floor. But they were still trussed up. But now came the tricky business of releasing them from their bonds. So they're going to take the ropes off of them. Nobody wanted to go down and do this because the moment a giant was freed, he would be sure to turn on the wretched person who had freed him and gobble him up. As usual, the BFG had the answer. It's pretty smart for a guy who never went to school, huh? I has told you before, he said, science is never eating giants. So I is going down and I shall untie them myself before you can say Rack Robinson. It's Jack Robinson. 
With thousands of fascinated spectators, including the queen, peering down into the pit, the BFG was lowered on a rope. And you know what? Here's a picture from before the BFG got lowered. This is one of the giants being lowered all tied up into that large hole that was dug. Um, with thousands of fascinated spectators, including the queen, peering down into the pit, the BFG was lowered on a rope. One by one, he released the giants. They stood up, stretched their stiffen limb, stiffened limbs, and started leaping about in fury, furious anger. Why is they putting us down here in this grob sludging hole? Oh, sorry, that wasn't the BFG. Why is they putting us down here in this grob sludging hole? They shouted the BFG. Because you is guzzling human beings, the BFG answered. I is always warning you not to do it, and you is never taking the titchiest bit of notice. In other words, they don't take his advice. In that case, the flesh lump eater bellowed, I think we is guzzling you instead. BFG grabbed the dangling rope and was hoisted out of the pit just in time. Wow. He said, well, now we're going to eat you. Good thing he got out of there. The great bulging sack he had brought back with him from giant country lay at the top of the pit. What's in there? The queen asked him. The BFG put an arm into the sack and pulled out a gigantic black and white striped object the size of a man. Snazgumbers, he cried. This is a repulsive snazgumber, Magister, and that is all we is going to give these disgusting giants from now on. <laughs> Remember, that's all he had to eat when they were out eating people. So now he's saying, let's give these to the giants. My, I, may I taste it? The queen said. Don't, Magister, don't, cried the BFG. It is tasting of dry filth and pig squibble. With that, he tossed the snobs cumber down to the giants below. There's your supper, he shouted. Have a munch on that. He fished out more snobs cumbers from the sack and threw them down. There's a picture of him. The snobs cumbers out of his sack, throwing them down into that big hole. Did you guys see that um, Snickers commercial during the Super Bowl? With that big hole? Making a little bit of a text to world connection there. The giants below howled and cursed. The BFG laughed. It serves them right, left and center, he said. What will we feed them on? What will we feed them when the snaz cumbers are all used up? The queen asked him. They is never being used up, Magister, the BFG answered, smiling. I is also bringing in this sack a whole bungle of snaz cumber plants, which I is giving, with your permission, to the royal gardener to put in the soil. Then we is having an everlasting supply of this repulsive food to feed these thirst bloody giants on. It's bloodthirsty, but he says thirst bloody. What a clever fellow you are, the queen said. You are not very well educated, but you are really nobody's fool. I can see that. I just thought too. He's pretty smart for a guy who never went to school. That was a super short chapter. So we are at the end of that chapter. The next chapter is the author. Ooh, friends. The next chapter is the author, and it is the last chapter. Wow. We're finishing this book on Friday, as expected, which is exciting. The, the next chapter, by the way, super short. We are, like, nearly done. All right, friends. I'll see you next time.